I'm into neuroscience, I'm into the brain. Uh, I got into that because I wanted to know why we were doing what we were doing. What you'll find in this video is the sorts of stuff that explain why we do things, explain how we split ourselves up into two worlds and that these two worlds don't get on together. And one makes us sick and one makes us healthy and I'm afraid the real world is not doing us any good. Ladies and gentlemen, my book, How the Real World is Driving Us Crazy, comes out in this DVD, which you'll be seeing right now. Here we are, the secret of great achievers. That's us. Life's a funny thing. Life's a very strange thing, and we all say this, and we have a great deal of trouble. There are a few things that I've been involved with. I've written some books. Uh, I'm also a musician as well, and we do some singing, and we'll do some later. But it's understanding what life's all about and where it comes from. The questions about it came up in me over the years, and the one that really bugged me was how is it that people go to motivational seminars, they read the inspirational books, they go to walls of this, they go this, and that, blah, 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 thousands and thousands of things. How come we're getting worse? How come we're getting more stressed? We're getting more anxious. We're getting more depressed. Uh, and I know some individuals are getting better, but I, I'm, I'm at the, the, the pointy end of the stick as a psychotherapist, and it's not. Um, so that's the question I went out to answer. I couldn't find anyone who answered it in a way that satisfied me, so I kept researching and actually came up with an answer myself, which is what we'll show, talk about today. But I love the positive stories. Just like everybody. I mean, the, there's a wonderful story about a friend of mine and, and uh, she had this beautiful relationship with her grandmother. And she was only about five or six and, and she sort of did something bad. And the, the grandmother went, oh, you know, you've disappointed me and blah, 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 and I, I, you, blah, 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 and went off inside. And this child was just mortified because grandma had never got cranky, never got anything. And oh, she hid in the backyard and she said it was terrible. It was the hardest thing in my life. I knew I had to go up and apologize, but it was the hardest thing in my life. And so eventually she went up and she said, oh, grandma, I'm so sorry that you're disappointed in me. And grandma said, oh, sweetheart, I'm not disappointed in you. I love you. I'm disappointed in what you did. I'm disappointed in the fact that you knew better and you didn't think. But, oh, no, we will never, ever talk about something being wrong with you ever again. We will only talk about what you do and how you behave, and we'll just fix it. Hugs, hugs, hugs. I love those stories. And we hear those a lot, and we're motivated marvelously. But as I say, I'm at the pointy end of the stick. So I also have the stories like the young boy in our local community who was pretty good at school, but not great. He was father, was, and his father was a good old school father. Come on, you've got to achieve. You've got to achieve because that's what's going to make you something in the world. And he went along and he found things more difficult. And actually, the more people pressed him to be better, the worse he got. And the more difficult it became for him. And he was coming up to his high school exams, the high school certificate exams, and his dad just really just thought, I've got to give it to him. And he said, you'll never amount to anything unless you get down there and do it. You know, bam, let's get you motivated. So the boy was just, wow. So he went off and he thought he'd write it down. So he, he, he wrote it down. Look, I, I just don't want to be a disappointment to anybody. I, I don't want to not do I'm trying my best. And if I'm doing my best, and that's not going to be good enough, and I'm never going to amount to anything, I, I don't understand. And I've got no friends, and nothing's happening. Signed it. And then he killed himself. And 350 people went to his funeral. Why? What was going on? And this isn't a mystery to me. There's my gorgeous niece, Elma. Stand back for those in the corner. Gorgeous. 23 years old, living in, in Italy and in Rome with my sister, speaks three or four languages, teaches, uh, studying film, and doing all the things, travels to France regularly. But living in a world that constantly says, you're not good enough, you're not enough, uh, and, and to a certain extent, very misogynistic uh, areas in, in Italy. Um, 
you know, you're not good enough. You're not going to be able. I'm not going to give you this list. I'm not, 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 not. Until such time that she just couldn't feel happy. Until such time as that happiness slipped into depression. And until such time as the only cure was a flight out of a fourth story building. The conclusion I came to was that what we do is we create a better day tomorrow. We create a better day tomorrow. And that is what, how I defined hope. Your capacity to take what you have now and make something more. And you know, that's actually what makes human beings human beings. And how come we've survived as a species? Now I found that out because I thought, that book's cute, but where's all, why, how, what, still questioning. So I went back to university, I studied linguistics, I ended up anthropology, paleoanthropology, yada, 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 into to, um, uh, psychology to try and find out how the mind works, and then into neuroscience, and then I started bumping into guys, you might have seen some of the names on the book for those, uh, Ernest Rossi, Dan Siegel, um, all these Marty Seligman, positive psychology for those, you and I'm just going, there is this wealth of knowledge and information that's out there. Well, I never heard of it. Where the, where, who's been hiding this? Who's been hanging on to this good information? Why? Life's a funny thing. Because there's a stage at which you just can't get past stuff. It just has got you. It's Oh, I was going to say naughty word. Uh, I'm not quite sure how good we can be. Can I say buggered in this crowd? You're buggered, because I'm an Australian and everything's fine. Uh, so let's look at this. Enough of me talking. I want to actually do this because I'm going to show you something really simple before we get into this, this, the, the whole process of where we're going and what we're doing. And I want you just to think about a problem that you've got some problem that's happening at the moment that just has got you, it's just stopped you, and it's driving you nuts and actually making you feel pretty not so good about yourself. Don't get too heavy because you're going to have to tell the person next to you in a minute. So just see if you can just, uh, just quickly have a little think of just the first thing that comes to your head, some problem that's just stumped you and is, can't get past it, can't get past it. Silent think music for those of you who was <laughs> for those of you who were psychic. Uh, it's good. I've never done that gag before. It was quite funny. All right. This, you know, when you do something and you think, oh, that was funny. Oh, it was me. I can't say that. All right. Anyway. So silent, silent think music. Uh, now just quickly pick a, a person next to you. It doesn't matter whether you know them or not. And just uh, tell them. So one of them, tell them the problem that you've got, and the other one, tell them the problem you've got. So we just, so we just share it. So that we're witnessing it. <laughs> okay. So feedback. Fantastic. <laughs> Have to stop because now you're trying to help each other. Stop it. <laughs> stop that selfless, caring sort of garbage. <laughs> oh, joy of caring this afternoon. Oh, wrong talk. I thought I was doing the corporate talk. Anyway, uh, all right, re really good. So, so now I need, um, now I need a, 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 a volunteer who has uh, no secrets. <laughs> Fantastic. Come on up. So she says, yes, and I'm actually a man. No, oh, fantastic. Now, just uh, could you share with us your, what your problem is? No, I didn't know it was going to be that. Damn. Right. Is um, that up? On? Yeah, good. Should I talk later? Um, get ang tend to get angry with our society and angry at some people's behaviour and find it hard to be positive in a, in a negative, predominantly negative world. Fantastic. So your problem is that it is just annoyingly and frustratingly are difficult to be positive. Yes, you do your tai chi in this negative you get world. Road rage yeah, <laughs> that's right. Positive to be positive in a negative world. It's really difficult to be positive in a negative world. And that's the problem you can't get past. Yes. Okay. Here is the simplest technique you could ever imagine, and it's used in psychotherapy. And it was written about 20 or 30 years ago. We're really starting to talk about it now, and particularly in positive psychology and in my work. The problem is a message. We have been fed that we are negative. The negative thing is that you have a problem. There's something wrong with you and we've got to fix it. When you come to my psychotherapy, they say, what's wrong with me? I say, nothing. I say, let's look at the messages that we're getting. So, okay, your message is it's really difficult to be positive in a negative world. Mm. Okay, so that's the message. So what can we create with that? 
wonder what we can create with that. I don't know. I've got. To, I, I've got to suggest. It's really to be a positive and negative world. So, um, what are the sort of things that, that make you feel negative? What is? What are, just? What's some of the things that make you feel negative? Our societies focus on superficial appearance. Our yeah. societies focus on yeah. money, on Fan wealth, on houses. Fantastic. So what? So what are some of the things you do? Um, tai Chi. Um, yeah. Sorry. Or what do I Fantastic. Do? No, it's great. So tai Chi, yeah. and you do your own stuff, and that's yeah. really good. And do you ask anybody else to come and join you at, at no, times and things? No, they're busy doing their. But how about how about that? Yeah. How about we try? The problem is the message. There's too much negativity. So let's see if we can get some more people to join in with the positive ideas. Sure. Yeah, it's a great idea. We got somewhere to go now. Yes. Twenty seconds ago, we had a problem where we couldn't get past. Now we have a problem that we can use to actually do something else. I don't know whether it'll work. The problem, the next problem might be no one pays the attention. Like they all say, piss yeah, off, you know, I'm you idiots. I'm trying. <laughs> now we've got somewhere. Okay, you've got a minute and a half to now share with each other and talk and give your partner an idea. You know the problem they've got? Now, what's an idea? Give them an idea. <laughs> Let's create. The problem is a message. So it's no longer something that you can't do, it's something that's telling you how to move forward. Have a go. And your partner give you an idea. Who has now somewhere to go? Has something, has got a, just another idea, another place where a little bit, for, little bit of somewhere to go. You've got an idea from the other person. Created something. This looks like an auction, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> but, yeah. Now, from the neurological, the neurobiological point of view, what happened was the way in which our brain functions changed. Because the mindset, the frame of reference, the way in which we were thinking, what we were believing in, was shifted. And what's fascinating is the mind your attitudes and beliefs and ideas directly affect the brain to the point of the way it functions and also of parts of it that grow, what grows and what, what expands. And you know, Linda was talking a bit about some of this stuff this morning from the inner point of view. And when the brain is working in a particular way, that affects the way the body works, and particularly in the way the DNA expresses itself. And this is what Wayne was talking about, your genetic expression. We can actually go in now, draw out some fluids, check it out, what proteins are going on in your blood, to find out what frame of mind you're in, because we'll know whether you're in this particular brain type of pattern, this particular mindset that I'm now going to talk about. And the thing was, I couldn't find anybody who talked about it, so in association with some of these very interesting people, I've come up with this way of describing it. And it's a place called the winner-loser world. The winner-loser world is a place where we have the problems. The winner-loser world is the place where we can't get past things. What's interesting is, the winner-loser world is based on the way our brain changes when we believe we are not safe. And all kinds of things make us feel unsafe. Certainly the big woolly bear jumping out from behind the, uh, the, the wherever, that's going to make us feel unsafe. But the other thing that people don't re realise or remember makes us feel unsafe is the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, and the fear of disconnection from the community. Now this goes back to when uh, little, animalist, uh, little animals uh, aren't able to survive. So if they lose mother or if they get abandoned by mother or rejected by mother, they will die. Uh, and so you see this when you see the nature shows and the little cub going even though there's a predator nearby because the bub has to have mum and those sort of things go on. Epicurus, the great um, uh, philosopher, talked about this years and years and years ago, two and a half thousand years ago. He said, in order to be happy, you need to be free of the state. You need to be free of the state of being under control, of not being in your own, your own focus. So when we are unsafe, we turn on a whole different part of the brain and a whole different part of the mind than we do when we do feel safe. And what's interesting is the one we turn on when we're safe is the thing called social engagement. And when you are feeling unsafe, and I'm not going to go through the entire theory, I'll get it a bit later because it's too difficult, but just believe me for now. When you feel unsafe, you turn off your social engagement facilities. Wow! Who's got a mortgage? Who feels a little bit unsafe? Yeah. 
You know what we had just the other day? A year six child killed himself. We lost a year six kid because he felt unsafe and he didn't have the inhibitory processes of inner belief and inner work to be able to work it. Because that's one of the things that the unsafe world does too. It takes you out of yourself. We are in a mindset now in our culture where what is important to us, and I'm reading this because it's good, what is important to us shifts from our qualities and values within us to the dangers of what we fear in a place we have come to call the real world. Who's been on holiday? Having a great time? Chatting, yep, and but that takes a week, boom, suddenly, oh, a week later you're having sex with somebody. <laughs> And, and fascinatingly, it may even be someone you've known for quite some time, who you haven't had sex with for a long time. You know. <laughs> but you're chatting, you're doing, you're having fun, you're eating, you're, you're, doing, you're, doing, you're touching, you're doing all these sorts of things, you're going up, the cook comes out, and, and you're complaining about the mood, and you say, no, I want to say it's lovely, oh, give me a hug, you Frenchman. So all these things are going on. And what do you do? You get to the end, you pack the bags. Some people are actually, I was on a cruise ship for a while, and they're on the gangplank and going, well, Betty, that was really great, but let's get back to the real world. <laughs> like it's a good idea. <laughs> Kids come with these fantastic ideas, and they say, oh, we could do this, and we could make a helicopter out of a chicken, and turn it with a, an elephant thing, and a, put a small... <laughs> That's a great idea, son, but it'll never work in the real world. If you don't measure up in the real world, you'll never amount to anything. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. Patch is coming in later and talking about the joy of caring. I've been going to workshops with him. He's stopping it. We're going to stop it too. It. The win or loser world. Do you want to know what it is? I've spent five years trying to figure it out. I really hope I've got a contribution. I really hope there's more contributions to come. But this is what the real world, the winner-loser world is made of. It's made of exclusion. I've got eight, which are really kind of neat. Look at that. What a picture, every picture tells a story. You see, there's a little girl there. This is not so. There's a little girl sitting at school, and there's the three kids behind going, yee, and she's all excluded. We exclude. It's possible for us to exclude. What do we got? We got events. We get stuck in events. It's what you did. I can never forgive you for what you did. Now, I don't know when you see that, but that's an aeroplane fl uh, flown into a house. Uh, okay, it's not a good event. Uh, and, and, and I suggest it probably needs quite a bit of work to get over. But it's just as likely for some people that this guy will never be forgiven. You're, you can't drive. You're not able to do this. You're not allowed to take the kids. You're not allowed to have sex with me because you flew the plane into the house. <laughs> I only did it once. <laughs> we got instruction. Oh, I got a picture here of a, of, of a referee and a coach at a, a football game of some sort. Who's in charge? You're to do what I do. No, you're to do... Everyone told me I was in charge. No, I'm in charge. Uh, so we get this thing. People come to work. They say, this is what you have to do. You have to do this and this and this and this and this. And so what does the average human being who's looking for their own sense of personal autonomy and their own personal sense of, sense of intelligence and a sense of value, what do they do? They say, I'm not going to bloody do it. <laughs> sort of without saying the words. You know, like the, like the silent think music. <laughs> And then they go off and do something else. The boss says, why aren't you doing what I told you? And they sack them. Then they go out and kill themselves. <laughs> All too often. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, competition. Now, it's, oh, it's such a pity. We get, it's just a little bit off here. That's a stock exchange. And there's about five or six guys all huddled together. They're touching. Their elbows are touching. And honest to God, there's not one face that has any sense that there is another human being near them. The only thing that matters is this thing over here with the screen, which is saying dollar, 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 the value of you. This is what you're valued at. This is what you're valued at. Competition, where winning is the only purpose. This is what I'm talking about. Where winning the thing that other people think is a good idea makes you of value. Now, I've got nothing against winning. I mean, you know, running a race and coming through the, the tape first. That's a, personal, that's a personal achievement. But when winning that race makes you something 
better or some other thing than other people, regardless of what's inside you, you've got a crazy world. That's why the real world is driving us crazy. Results, I think you can see this one. Uh, I, think we have a, I think we have a little bit of a gist about what's going on here. But it's like this thing, the problem. The problem is a message. She has to create something out of this disaster. If anyone can't see, I think she's looking at a wee little pregnancy test. And she's going, oh my God, I love the guy at the back. He's got his hands on his back of his head. Is that what causes it? <laughs> you know, um, so it's sort of like things. But they have got to create something. They would come to me and they would say, I have a problem. I have a problem. This is impossible. I can't get past this. And I say, you must, because you are past it, because it's yesterday. We have moved in time. What can we create out of this? That's one of the, th this is, anyone want a therapy? The problem is a message. And what can I create out of that message? Change your lives. Change your lives overnight. A creative, interactive world. Now, for those of you who are into the psychobiological stuff, uh, Stephen Porges, P-O-R-G-E-S, the polyvagal theory, P-O-L-Y-V-A-G-A-L. Go look it up on the web, fantastic stuff. This is all to do with a, 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 a nerve called the vagus nerve, and it actually has split up into three different functions. One is this socially engaged function where it comes into the face, it comes into the throat, it comes into the shoulders, goes into the heart and into the stomach area. And it works there and makes you feel good, opens up your heart, reduces your blood pressure, gives you lots of fabulous facial expression, lifts your eyelids and gives you a voice that goes up and down. The second level knocks off the vast majority, it just goes back to the base uh, facial muscles, there's only about four or five of them. So it lowers the face, reduces the eyes, makes the, uh, the voice monotonous and reduces gesture. Also, it puts pressure on the heart through blood pressure by thinning the, uh, uh, closing up the arteries and turns your stomach off. The third level, which is down below that, is submission to uh, horror of, uh, 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 of death. And you might have seen this, uh, animals that actually, we've got prey and the, the thing. One will run, like the mouse will run away from the, the snake. But there's a point at which the mouse will just stop and just get eaten because the probability is gone, you know, so. This is really interesting stuff, but please go and investigate that or chat with me afterwards. Come to the website, we'll be talking about all this stuff on the website. Um, so the creative interactive world is, this, is a new thing and we turn it off and then wonder why everybody's going nuts. But this is what the, 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 uh, the, the creative world, it's about inclusion. You open your arms, you let people in. Doesn't mean you give them everything, you just open arm and include them. Although, um, I don't know those you can see that, but that's a telephone box with 40 sort of university guys in there and someone's having a bad time. But lessons and opportunities, this is great. There's a slide here, it's got learn to fly and if you just have a look in the background, there's an aeroplane, not quite right. It ain't in the house. But it's a little upside down. Win or lose the world, you idiot, you can't ever have sex with me again. Creative world, wow, you know how to land a plane on its head. <laughs> Pretty much now we're going to go to landing on the wheels. <laughs> and although I'm making a joke in light of it, literally, I've got clients who come in and say, I'm an alcoholic. And I go, oh, wow, fantastic. I'm like, what do you mean fantastic? I, I say, well, I don't know, alcoholism, you're, 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 you, you know you're ill and you're seeking a remedy, uh, you're prepared to medicate, um, you, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're a little bit obsess obsessive um, uh, and a couple of other things. And I said, basically, these are really great qualities that we can create with. All you've done is made a really, really crap decision choosing alcohol as the way to manifest those ideas. And then they go, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm going to drink to that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> although, although that might not be true. Um, 
And I have to actually say that when I'm, uh, uh, particularly cleaning, I'm, not, I'm pretty good with clients, but I have to sometimes say, uh, and that's not true. <laughs> information. As different from instruction, this world of instruction where every time someone tells you something, you think you're being told you're stupid. Information is always something you can create with. Just as we had, we had a wonderful one here, the last call me down and said, the, 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 her partner was saying, well, I don't really have any problems at the moment. And I say, that's your problem. You have no problems. You're now sitting still. So, wow, if you haven't got any problems, um, what can we create with that? Maybe knowledge of how not to have problems. How do you do this? Let's go out and tell some people. Let's share it. Let's, you know, let's help out. And, and it was, it's a great idea. You know, uh, if someone said to me, um, you should you know, share with all the stuff you have in your head. And boy, wasn't well, that a mistake? <laughs> so, so it's the artist's, the artist's easel, because I have people criticizing, of course, saying, oh, you know, so what, you just let everything into your life. You know, let everything into your life. I said, no, you let everything be included in your life, and then you choose, then you select, because on this easel, not all the colors are being used. But if you don't like gray, brown, and blue, and you get rid of them and get them off because you don't want to play those cards and you're hiding it, then you can never have that in your color scheme. If you've always got them there, you can always have colours that just never have those things because that's what you want. And if someday you're just not quite sure what to do, you can just go... And away we go. I've got the lovely, there's a lovely artist friend of mine who was doing her bits and pieces and a woman spilled her tea on the, on, on the, on the, 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 the canvas. And went, oh my God! And she just went, fantastic, let's see what it does. <laughs> that is the way to, do, to live your life. And it really is, I mean, I'm over the top. I, I'm, I'm big and very, very rambunctious. You can do this in a very small way. But someone comes up and says, oh, you're an idiot and I hate pink. <laughs> oh my God, she's going, and there's bits of you, there's bits of you just going, I don't okay, because you're a big speaker and important. But the essence of it is, wow, how interesting. That's interesting, Richard. How interesting that you actually wanted to embarrass me. <laughs> you know, you wanted to use me. That's interesting. I know a bit about, okay, so you're a performer. Do you think? But okay, so you don't like pink. So if I asked you on a date, you probably wouldn't wear pink because I don't like it. And you go, well, okay, well, I won't wear pink. In the win or loser world, you'd wear everything pink. You'd wear pink up the thing and the pink and paint yourself pink and wear pink hair and say, I'll show you to tell me what it's all about. <laughs> so I just sit there when someone's telling me all this stuff and I say, what wonderful information. I am now more understanding of you. What you wanted to do was make me feel awful about me, but sorry, it doesn't work that way because you can't make me feel awful about me because unless I'm dead, I'm okay. <laughs> in the creative world, inspiration and creativity. Here we have a whole bunch of people fixing up a rotten old wall in their, in their community and they're all working together. The first person who steps forward to say, now what we need to do, Barry, you go over here, Mary, you go over there, the first person who does that will ruin that experience because it will become a win or loser thing. Oh, you're not doing that right. You're not doing that properly. Um, outcome. In the, in the win or loser world, it's results. It's all about what you do that matters. Whereas in the creative world, what you do is the launching pad for what you can then do next. That doesn't mean you accept everything. Sometimes the outcome is something you don't like. Well, that's all right. Now, in the win or loser world, an outcome that isn't what you want is a failure. In the creative world, it's just, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do something else. I'll now create from this. Uh, <laughs> this is great. I don't know whether you can see this. This is, a, this is a man on a lake with a table and there is an outboard motor on the back and he's motoring himself across. Possibility. I want to get to the other side. I've got a table and a thing. Win or lose a world, I'll never get there. Creative world. It's just really good. Although I believe his grandmother is really annoyed about the antique getting lost. The... Um, Interaction, of course, instead of that transaction, you interact, you give. Now, I'm not actually advocating that you go out into the win or lose the, uh, lose the world out there and start interacting with everybody openly. Yes, you need to transact. This is why the two worlds are need to understand. So you need to actually creatively utilize the aspects of the win or lose the world in a win or lose the world situation. So you can do that, so you're not being defeated. But this is great. Little kids in kindergarten. How long it is? Where is it? Second class, third class, where they're saying, oh, I'm not going to. 
I'm not going to. My power is that I'm not going to let you share. Rather than the power is sharing because then it gets bigger and better. Ah, this is great. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of Alsatians at police school and a cat walking along. Now, that cat knows itself, knows its place, has looked at the environment, has scanned it for what its possibilities are, and is working with those possibilities. <laughs> what would an arrogant cat who said, I can walk in front of these dogs, I'll show everybody how fantastic I where would that cat be? <laughs> Heaven. <laughs> yes. And the dog's saying, it's raw. <laughs> So these are the things. How are we going? What have I got? I got, Ian, are you being clever on the watch there? I've got a, what about another 20? That sounds good? Okay. We've got a few things to do. Uh, but that's what we're going there. So these are the eight differences. And they exist independently of themselves. When you are doing these guys, neurobiologically, you can't do these guys. Broadly. Broadly. I mean, obviously there's, there's, there's elements of discussion and I've got to tell you, I could talk about every slide on this thing for an hour. Uh, please don't make me. Um, so when you're doing these things, it's a mindset. It's a thing that changes. And this is, this is the other one. So the way the winner lose the world, our self-worth is determined by how well we measure up in the real world. Sucks. Creative world, interactive world, we discover who we are and what we're possible of in the, uh, as we encounter, interact and experience the outside world. Uh, follow your bliss, find your expression, Joseph Campbell, all these guys for years and years. That's what it's about. And here's the secret of what it's going to do. I'm going to do this really quickly because I've got an experience that I want us to have which is going to take about 15 minutes, so we better get onto this. It's to do with the general stress response. Now, stress is our problem? No, it's our message. The general stress response is you're wandering along in life, experiencing things, doing what you're having the personally challenging endeavour, which is not life-threatening, difficult, strugglesome, sometimes very frustrating and upsetting and can do all kinds of things, but it's not a thing. It's not the fight-flight thing. When you do get those sorts of stresses, which come from the woolly tiger... Oh, look, can we answer that? Uh, I better not have got time. Uh, we shut down, we shut down the normal, and we actually get into the fight-or-flight response. Then, something really cool and groovy, we, we resolve it. We solve, we worry that mum's going to abandon us and she says, like the grandmother, no, 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 everything's fine. And you know how everyone says stress is really good for you? No, 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 no. Stress is really, really bad experience. Coming off stress is the really good one. Because you de-stress and you become creative, you laugh, you become connected to people, you engage, you tell the stories, you actually after a period pause and all your immune system functions really strongly and well. And this is what makes stress interesting. This is why people jump out of aeroplanes, not for the moment where they jump out, the moment, when they jump out it's brown trouser time. <laughs> Landing. That's when they feel really, they're going, yip -o, yip -o, yip -o, you know, with the guy at the top of the, 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 in the first 10 metres of the bungee jump, look at their face. They're, they're not doing anything fun at all. When they go, whoa, whoa, and they're still, you know, they didn't wear the loose shoes, they are feeling terrific. But what happens is, in the winner loser world, because we're embedding this damn thing in our culture, and we're going back two and a half thousand years, so it's got a bit of history, what happens is these winner loser stresses come out and they continue the shutdown to the point, and what my theory suggests and seems to be evident in what's going on is an explanation of why it is getting worse. And it's not going to get better with Band-Aids. While we keep trying to fix the winner-loser world, become creative in a winner-loser world, we just get kicked in the head. It's only by shifting that, that is my theory. Um, and in the winner-loser world, you're defensive, you're disengaged, you're compelled, and you're stressed. And I get people, can't sleep, headaches, no digestion, sexual drives down, uh, work is really impossible, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I say, I think you're a bit stressed. And they always turn around to me and say, no, I'm fine. 
Because in the winner-loser world, you cannot be emotionally disturbed because you're a loser. So no one will come. Out of a survey, they surveyed people who thought they needed talk therapy. They then got rid of everybody who didn't, and they talked to 100% of the, of the sample, believed they needed some kind of talk therapy, and when asked would they get it, 83% said, nah. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Ah, morons. Anyway, so what happens? What happens is we have this thing, but we can pop down. We go the holiday. We have the, the, the lovely evening. We have the comedy thing, whatever. We have the buzz. We have the sorts of stuff that, that the guys were doing this morning, which is so fantastic. And we can get back from this state of the winner-loser down to this really cool and groovy. We feel cool and groovy for a while. But then something happens. We do, we've read the book. We've done the workshop. Uh, something happens. Damn it, we go back. And this happens all the time. I mean, Susie and I, are, now we've, we've been practicing this for years, we just turn around and go, whoa, we're getting win or loser here. So we've got pretty comfortable with the, with the process. But this is caused by the seven demons. And we're going to run through these, and then we're going to do, we're going to do this other thing. Seven demons. <laughs> demons are things that trick you into thinking they're good for you, but they're actually not. Right and wrong. That's the first one. I love that. Just because you're smarter doesn't mean that I'm not right all the time. <coughs> so it's all about this idea that we have to be right. Most of my couples uh, therapy is because people are trying to be right. I've actually had people say, I will agree to do what the other person has, has, has put forward as long as they say that I'm right. <laughs> you all do that. You all do it. Ugh. I do occasionally. Good and bad. This is a little thing the little kid, he's put, uh, he's put rap all over his stuff and say, now let Santa figure out if I'm good or bad. Uh, so we know what's good or bad. We know the difference between good and bad. But in our win or loser world, he who has the higher moral ground is the one who is the one who is the winner. And the winner is the one who is not abandoned. That makes you the loser. What do you do? You then become uncomfortable, disengage, you remove yourself from the person, you feel really bad. That's awful. This person who's won suddenly has everyone disengaging from them. That makes them feel really bad. So then they start. You cannot win in the winner loser world. Because at some stage, one of these buggers will get you. <coughs> Expectation. Oh, this is a cartoon, the, the, the funny old couple in the front of the thing, and they've got the superhero up the thing. And it says, Henry, Henry was nothing like his parents expected. Such a disappointment. <laughs> so it's all about what you're supposed to be, like our poor boy in the beginning. Fault and blame. Oh, I love this. I have metal fillings in my teeth and my refrigerator magnets keep pulling me into the kitchen, and that's why I can't lose weight. <laughs> If you're not at fault and somebody else is blamed, isn't that the thing? How many people do you know at work where you go up and you say, oh, gee, uh, wh 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 how did that move? Oh, I didn't do it. No, I wasn't. I, I didn't do that. And you go, you don't even know what I'm saying. Yeah, but I didn't do it. <laughs> and we are rewarding people for saying that. We say to people, why don't criminals, um, why don't criminals uh, uh, you know, give in? Why don't, they, someone do the, why don't they do the right thing and come in and, and, and own up and get grabbed and by police and taken to the prison and get bashed around and get taken to the courts and get thrown into jail and get raped by you know, really ugly, sort of hairy men from things? <laughs> you lie your heart out. I didn't do it. So constantly, we can't trust anybody. Criticism, of course, criticism in the win is, is, is this thing. But actually, in the win-or-loser world, it's just information. So when someone criticizes you, it's always, wow, what an interesting thing. Because they're telling you what they think about you, or they're telling you what they think about themselves, but they can't tell themselves, so they're telling you. And I like that. You've got a problem with avoiding personal accountability. And I says, yeah, and whose fault is that? <laughs> so these, these guys are interchangeable. They're starting to work with each other. Isolation and separation. Let's get serious for a second. That's our photo from the website. They need your help. I had a guy this morning stop me. M Dear sir, excuse me, please sir, I'm homeless. You're looking very nice today, sir. I'm completely subservient. I'm going to do everything, the best pitch I can to try and just get you to give me a couple of dollars because I'm my life. <laughs> and I just said, look, it's a great line. I love it. Thanks very much. Here's, this is what I got. You know, so, so we did that. Uh, guilt, I'm a lousy tipper and I'd like your rudest waitress so I won't feel guilty about it. <laughs> and that's fun, but this is the truth. When everyone is guilty, who is left to be innocent? 
Every day, I want to wake up innocent, with a clean slate, filled with lessons and opportunities, and problems that I have turned to messages. Because this will kill us. And it is. I was asked to write a song for my cousin's husband, who was dying of cancer. And so I said, uh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. He said, no, 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 he's not dead yet. <laughs> oh, hey, so I wrote, oh, we're sorry, this is terrible. I said, oh, what I'm going to do is... This guy lived his life. This guy lives his life. It's absolutely fantastic. And all he wants to do is live it more until such time as he ceases living his life. So I wrote this, and I played it at the funeral, and a few people liked it. And we're going to join in later. The road is long on the journey. Most times it winds out of sight. But even if you lose your destination, you got to stand up and give a good fight. Because every corner that we come round, that could be the last one on the map. All we know is what's before us. We got a battle on, there's no turning back. This is what it's like. I'll never live my life like a beggar. I'll never live my life to be cruel, no, never live my life like some wasting angel. I'm going to live life, oh, I'm going to live my life. What was fantastic was all he wanted to do that he hadn't done was get a red sports car. He got it, he drove in the damn thing once. And so I wrote this verse. I just want to feel that fast wind. Or feel it blowing wildly through my hair. I'm just going to place one foot in front of the other. I'm going to soak up all the world it will share. Life like no beggar, never let my life to be cruel. No, never live my life like some wasting angel. Gonna live life, yeah. Hey, I'm gonna live my life, hey, yeah. You know, I my chance how to choose my directions and I choose to go on to go on just the same cause I made my decisions without fear of temptation. You know, I knew who I was. So when you get out there, when you get out there, don't be sent back into the, the, the win or loser world.
Don't listen to right and wrong, somebody else's opinion. Be right in your heart. Don't be told who's good and bad. You can't be bad. You know what's good and bad. Don't let expectations ruin your desire to be what you're going to do. Fault and blame will just send you into a frenzy. Criticism is just information. Use it to make your life better and to turn the problem into a message. Isolation and separation will kill you and is killing everybody else. When you see someone isolated, grab them <laughs> with words, <laughs> with words, with heart, with arms. And we cannot have a world that is full of guilt because without innocence, we are no longer humans. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be over there. Come have a chat. It's been great.